Hi everyone. Uh, let's discuss about the different CDC capabilities that we have in Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics. Now, CDC is very useful uh, in order to retrieve the data from any operational data store to the analytical data store. Uh, traditionally, we have been using the watermark approach to bring the data from any uh, you know, transactional system to the big data system, and CDC basically comes there. So it replaces the watermark approach for those data sources where we can uh, enable the CDC or the chain stacking can be enabled. Uh, watermark approach still uh, holds good today for those data sources where we can't uh, you know, enable the CDC or that feature is not uh, present. So we'll quickly uh, look into uh, you know, two different approaches of CDC that we have in Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics. And we'll quickly look into the demo. This is a blog that uh, that I have written, and I'm going to post the link of this blog uh, in the uh, description of this video. So if if we look into the uh, the different capabilities that we are talking about, those capabilities fit in the in this section in the Lambda architecture. So we we generally have a data source, and now this data source can th these data sources can be SAP Dataverse, SQL Server, Cosmos DB. From there, we take the data into a data storage. Uh, probably that can be our landing zone. After that, we generally do the batch processing and then take this data from using the batch processing. This can be Spark or dedicated SQL pool or any other compute engine. And then we store the refined data into our analytical data store. For so the in our demo, what we are going to look to, we are going to have a Azure SQL DB as our operational store, and then we would be using either of this option. Uh, in, in one of the use case, we are going to use the native CDC. In another use case, we are going to use the top level CDC. And then we are going to store this data as a delta table in analytical store. After that, we'll use the Microsoft Fabric as our big data system, which will where we will create the shortcut to the delta table. And then from the Power BI, we are going to showcase those changes. So Power BI is going to be our serving layer. So let's look into the native CDC capability already set up the pipeline. So mainly uh, uh, I'm going to show you the different settings that we have in the data flow. So now this is the pipeline that we have. So inside the pipeline, we basically have this data flow task. Uh, the source database is the SQL server. And if we go to the source option, we can see that you know the change data capture is enabled and it is using the SQL server CDC type. Run mode is full on the fast run and then the incremental. So let's say the destination table is not present. So what it will do, it will do the full load fast and in the subsequent run, it will only look at the incremental and then you know we'll do the march. We have two types of CDC. One is this incremental column based and another one is a SQL Server CDC. So in the native approach, what happens that timestamp uh, and the ID uh, columns are not required. So the CDC activity that we have in the mapping data flow or the ADF CDC uh, uh, resource level, it will go to the source database and then try to look at those backend table where the change related you know, information are stored. Looking at that table, it will be able to identify after my fast run, what are those record got changed? And it will basically pick those record and move it to our destination. If we look the auto incremental approach, uh, unlike the native approach here, we need to provide the the column on which you know it is going to look at the changes. So modified date, for example. So let's say that you know uh, we ran the pipeline on a specific timestamp one. So after timestamp one, whatever the modified date we have, so it's going to pick up those record and then move those record to the destination. So it's not basically reading the whole table. Instead, it is read, reading a subset of the table. So checkpoint is basically keep the state of the pipeline run. So let's say I have executed the pipeline. So when I execute the pipeline, you know it will read the data at the source site till some point. So that state is going to be preserved in that checkpoint. So this checkpoint value should not be overridden unless you know we don't want to start this whole uh, pipeline activity from the beginning. So let's say you know we would like to do the full load again and then we would like to do the incremental again. So for those kind of scenario, we can go ahead and change the checkpoint key, but we'll just try to execute few script and then we'll try to see how the data is, is being uh, you know, reflect it in the analytical store when we change something in the uh, uh, you know transactional system. So for our use case, we basically have a SQL Server table, Azure SQL DB table, where we would be we have a customer table. So in that customer table, you know, we already enable the CDC, and then you know we have inserted few records, and we are going to do the same again. But before that, let's understand how many records we have in the customer table. Okay, so we basically have 887. Now I'll quickly go to our PBI report and then look at the current number. 
Okay, so we also have 887 for both the cases, right? So I'm going to do, I'm going to insert few more records. So let's say I have just, ex uh, you know, inserting 100 records here in a batch. Okay, and then uh, let's say I'm just updating few records. So let's say 1200. And let me just delete few records. So I'm just deleting these 50 records. So this is the 88 pipeline that we have. So now in the source side, we have already given this. Now at the sync side, what we have, we are basically saving the data in a delta table. Now, if you look at here, we are also doing update and uh, upset and delete both. So that means whatever the update delete uh, uh, we have done in the source side, so it should be reflecting the same in the destination side as well, which is our analytical store. And since we are going to do uh, the merge, we need to specify the key column on which uh, the existing data in the target uh, and the incoming data from the source would be joined together and then it will be able to understand the differences uh, and then can apply those differences into the target table. So let's execute this pipeline. So we can see this uh, job that you know we have triggered, so it, it is successful. Now what we'll do, we'll go back to our uh, destination site, and you know since it's a delta table, there are a lot of you know files got created. We'll quickly get into our Power BI report, and we'll just try to see uh, whether it it is reflecting here or not. So let me just refresh this. Yeah, we can see that you know the number is exactly you know matching with. The number that we have here in uh, in in the uh, in the source site, but you know you might have noticed that you know when I was refreshing even the top level citizen resource that count was also getting changed, right? So, uh, and we haven't done uh, any any kind of uh, action to change this number. This is one of the benefit that we have in the ADF top level CDC, where uh, we can basically bring the data from the operational data store in near real time. So let's look into the ADF top level citizen resource. Now, if we go back to the same ADF, uh, now this feature is only available in ADF, not not available in Azure Synapse Analytics. Now, if you go to the edit canvas, uh, we would be able to see a change data capture preview option is there. Now, here we can basically create uh, our CDC resource. So we have already created one CDC resource here, and we are going to look into the different settings that we have here. So as for, for the source table, you know, the dbo.customer is the table uh, which we would like to read. And in the target site, we basically have one more uh, location where we are saving the data, which is ADF top level V2. Okay. So now we have disabled the automap option. Uh, that was because you know we wanted to specify the key column on which the join will happen. This is similar to the key column that we have specified in the mapping data flow. So once this is done, what we have done in the latency part, we have provided the real time. So that means uh, in a in a it is going to be kind of a micro best scenario. So it will keep on hitting uh, the source uh, database and then try to look at look at the change event. And if there is a change event, it will basically pull the, pull all of them and uh, merge it with the destination uh, table that we have or the destination location that we have. So once that is done, we know we have already started this activity. So it is going to run uh, you know all the time. Now where it is running, it is basically running in a Core V code general purpose data flow. So at the back end, it is again using a uh, you know V code, and that V code would be up and running all the time since we have specified the latency as real time. So that, as I was showing you the differences, uh, I was mentioning that you know we can do partial uh, transformation here. So if you look at the mapping method, it's like direct. So it is going to be you know city to city like one to one mapping. But here also we can you know create you know few uh, you know basic level of transformation while sending the data from source to the destination. Now. This CDC is running right now, so we'll just try to look at uh, you know how quickly we are able to see the data uh, store when we change something in the uh, transactional system. So let's go back to here, and for now, what we are going to do, we are going to again insert, let's say, a small batch of 50 records. Okay, we have just uh, have done that, and then probably we'll just delete few records here. Okay. 
All right. And uh, let's let's try to let's look at how many records we have. So we have 975 records. So we'll go back to our Power BI report. So now what happened, you know, we, we have already changed the source system. The next thing that we have, this CDC connector will bring the data into our data lake as a delta table. So we'll go there. And if you look at this table, we can, so we can see this is the new file that got just added. So it is kind of instantaneous. Now, if we go to the report, so 936, it was a previous count. And if I just refresh it, we'll see that, you know, it got changed to the exact, so 975. And even we can see the number here as, as 975 as well. And if we would like to see if this data got deleted or not, so we can quickly, So we can see that everything got deleted. One th thing to be noted that you know in the native SQL example, nothing got changed. As I was explaining that you know we you know if we would like to receive the data, the change data, then we need to go ahead and trigger the pipeline. So we haven't triggered the pipeline now. Hence, it is showing us the old state. Since we have created the shortcut from our lake house to the delta table where we were dumping the data from the CDC connector, we, we would be able to use the Microsoft uh, you know fabric to query the data which is stored in an external storage. For example, if I'd like to do here, like you know, I can just run a few select queries on top of the delta table that we have. This is how you know uh, we can we can you know bring the data uh, instantaneously from the operational data store to the analytics data store using the different CTC capabilities. I hope you know uh, this video might be helping in your use case to implement. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.